Hey everybody, hope you are doing good. Let's continue the revision series. In this video, we are gonna revise exception handling. All right then. First of all, let's try to understand what is exception. Exception is nothing but error. But what's the error? Error are the problems. When we execute the program, the problems will occur and the execution will stop. If we talk about the types of error, there are two types. The first is syntax error and the second one is the exception. It is also called as logical error. From the name itself, it is clear what is syntax error. Syntax error will occur when the syntax is wrong. But what is exception? Syntax will be correct but still we will get the error. That's why we can define exception as an unexpected event. Let's first go through syntax error. Look at the example. Here syntax is wrong because colon is missing. These types of error are identified by the python interpreter. It will give the name of the error and a description about the error. Here are some more examples of the syntax error. Here 10 is initialized to one of the keyword which is invalid. And look at the next example. Double quotes are missing here. To help the programmer, Python interpreter will give the description of the error. So we can rectify it and correct it. Moving ahead, let's understand what is exception. First program will pass through the syntax test. If syntax is correct, then also we will get the error. That type of errors are called as exceptions. It will halt the program abruptly. So it is the duty of the programmer to catch and handle the exception. Look at this example. Syntax is perfectly fine. But in this case, we are trying to divide 5 by 0. It is not allowed. You will get exception. The name of the exception is zero division error. Then what's the problem with this code? We are passing string to integer function. We know ABC string cannot be converted to integer. That's why we are getting value error. Because this parameter is wrong for this function. There are lot of built-in exceptions. Here one of them, module not found error. Look at the name of the module. We have written it wrong. That's why we are getting this error. To give the clarity to the programmer, here is the description of the error. Here is one more exception. We are directly trying to print the value of the variable z which is not initialized. That's why we are getting exception name error. And in this example, we are getting attribute error. When we get this type of exception, when any object is not having the specified attribute. Here number is not having append attribute. So here are some of the examples of exception. Look at the list of the built-in exceptions. We already discussed some of the exception from this list. This exception zero division error will fire when we will try to divide a number by zero. If you will try to import wrong module, you will get import error. If the specify index doesn't exist and you will try to access it, you will get index error. In a dictionary, if key is not present, then you will get key error. Name error exception will get fired when you will try to access the variable without creating it, means without initializing some value to it. In case of improper indentation, you will get indentation error. If we pass wrong data type, value error will get fired. We understood how we will get the exception, but it is the responsibility of the programmer to handle it so that our program will not stop abruptly. For that, we will be using try except block. So there are four different blocks for the same. Let's discuss one by one. The code which will raise any exception, we will write that code in the try block. If there is a try block, except block is must. What is the use of except block? In case of exception, the control will go to the except block. In this code, exception will raise because we are trying to divide a number by zero. Look at the output. The control will go to the except block. In that block, we are printing the message. So we got the message. Here are some more examples of exception handling. We are trying to import the invalid module name. So this statement we wrote in the try block and when the exception will raise, we will come to the except block. So here is the output. It is clear why we are getting this output now. In this case, we are trying to access the variable without creating it. That's why exception will get fired. And when the exception will raise, we will come to the except block. In except block, we are printing the message. That message will get printed on the screen. 
all right let's try in the vs code here is one variable we are trying to divide one number by zero the syntax is perfectly fine but still you will get the error here let's try to print the result and execute the program and check the output look at the output we got error and here is the exception zero division error and here is the description of the exception division by zero now how to resolve it we will use try except block let's write first try block in the try block we write the code which may result in a exception now let's figure out what should we do if exception arised for that we will be writing except block when we are writing try block except block must be there in the except block let's print one message denominator should not be zero now let's execute this program once again and check the output look at the output now we are not getting error so it is the responsibility of the programmer to handle exception if the number is other than 0 there will be no problem let me show you we are trying to divide 3 with 2 now look at the output we got the perfect output we are getting the result here is a perfect example if user enters denominator as 0 then the exception will raised and for that we are printing a proper message. Now our program will not abruptly stop. So user will get an idea what's the problem. There are many built-in exceptions in python which we have already discussed. If you want to specify the name of the exception you can specify it with the accept keyword. In that case the program will perfectly accept that exception. Here is the name of the exception import error and here is the name of the exception that is name error. To catch specific exception we can do this also. When we are writing except block there can be multiple except block. In that case we can mention the specific name and at most only one exception will get accepted. That's why at most one handler will get executed but we can have more than one except block. Generally we write the specific exception in the beginning and generalize one at the last. If this exception will not get accept, it will check for the second one. If this is also not get accepting, it will directly come to the generalized one. It means from top to bottom the exceptions will try to match the specified one. Here is one more example of multiple except block. We can skip the last generalize except block too. It is optional. In this case we will get index error exception because we are trying to access 10th index which doesn't exist in the list. Alright then we are moving ahead to the third block. It is else block. We know we write the code in the try block which may raise exception. In case exception got raised we will come to the except block. But what if exception will not get raised then we will come to the else part. Because it is obvious that always exception will not raise. In that case we have else part. It means if exception will not raise we will directly come to the else part. Look at this example when we are trying to divide number by 0 exception will get raised we will come to except block. That's why we are getting this message. But in this case it is perfectly fine exception will not raise. It means we will come to the else part in that we are printing the result. That's why 2.5 is the answer. Hope you understood it. When exception will occur we will go to the except block. But if it will not get raised we will come to the else part. Alright there is one more block. The name of the block is finally. In case exception get raised we will come to the except block. If exception will not get raised we will come to the else part. But finally block will always execute whether the exception is getting raised or not. The control will come to finally block always. Generally this block is used to close the connections in case of database or file. Because exception will arise or not we need to do that process. Finally block is completely optional. There can be only one finally block. The exceptions which we have discussed was built in exceptions. But we can also raise our own exception. For that we can use raise statement. First we will be writing raise then the exception name. And here is the optional argument. We can write here message. What we need to display when exception is getting fired. Look at the simple example. We are initializing one variable with minus 1. 
Generally, we raise the exception with some condition. That's why we are using condition. If x is less than 0, raise the exception. And here is the message. This exception object is a generalized one. You can write the name of the exception too. Now look at the output. Here is the generalized exception that we got and here is the message for the same. And here is the example 2 for more practice. If you want to specify the name, you can specify because already we know the name of the built-in exceptions. If you want to go ahead with that built-in exceptions, you can write down it. Now one question will arise that exception is getting fired. It means again the program will terminate then how to handle it for that you can use try except block. Write the code in the try block which may raise exception and in except block handle it. So when the amount is less than 5000 you will get value error exception. Look at the output here we have initialized 2000 which is less than 500 that's why we got exception. Here is the same code let me execute and show the output. Look at the output, we got the exception value error as we mentioned and we are getting the message but again our program is getting terminated with the error. That we can handle by enclosing the code in the try except block. Now let's execute this code and check the output. We are not getting any error, we are getting the proper message. In this way if you are raising your own exception, enclose it in a try except block. There is one more concept that is assert. It is generally used to test an expression. When the expression become false, the exception will get raised. Look at the syntax. We will write assert keyword followed by the expression. It is nothing but the condition. And here is the optional parameter arguments. It is a message for the exception. We are entering the age of a person. If the age is greater than or equal to 18, we are writing the message. If this condition evaluates to false, then only this message will be getting. You will get this type of output. Let's imagine I am entering the age 10. So you will get the message you are minor because this condition is getting false. Generally we use assertion in case of function at the beginning of the function or at the end of the function to verify the input value. Look at this simple example. We are passing some value to the function. If it is greater than or equal to 0, then we are printing some message. If this condition will evaluate to false, then this message will get printed. And in our case, yes, it is getting evaluated to false because we are passing minus 2. It is not greater than or equal to 0. So look at the output. We got assertion error. Only positive numbers are allowed because we need to calculate the square of only positive numbers. Here is one more example for the same. Let's execute this code in the VS code. Look at the output. Again our program is getting terminated by showing the errors. To avoid this we will enclose the function call using try except block. So modify the code. Obviously exceptions are handled using try except block. So we will be doing the same as we did in raise exception. Now look at the output. We are getting proper message. With that note we are going to wind up today's video. In the next video we will solve the questions based on the exception handling. So stay tuned for the upcoming videos.